And I'm going to ask Sarah just to kind of introduce herself a little bit, a little bit about like her upbringing, her culture, and a little bit about uh, her department, because maybe not everyone knows what the treasurer's office actually does. Yeah, sorry. I don't know why I thought that there would be something. <laughs> Um, so I'm Sarah Benatar. I think um, those of you on here know me. Uh, I am the Coconino County Treasurer. I've been serving in this role since 2014. So it'll be nine years um, later this year. Time has flown by. Um, prior to that, I was at United Way. I've worked for um, school district in, in Oregon. I've worked for federal government, um, National Park Service and NASA. Um, so my whole career has been in public service, um, either government or nonprofit work. Um, I grew up, I, I'm not originally from, or from I'm not originally from Arizona. Uh, I'm originally from New York. Grew up in Florida, um, went to college, uh, Michigan. I'm a big Wolverine fan. Uh, go blue. Uh, went to law school at University of Oregon and ended up here um, actually in, in Flagstaff for an internship with the legal aid and met my husband that way. Um, but I was raised by a single mom. My mom is from Guatemala. I'm first generation born here. Uh, and so that really just shaped my upbringing. Uh, my dad passed away when I was two. And so it was just always my mom, my brother and I, and we always had family close by. And um, so, you know, it uh, just really was instilled from a young age of the importance of giving back um, and making a difference in in where you live and, and helping those around you. And so that's always driven me and why I've just essentially dedicated my life to, to public service. I always want to make these changes and, and create uh, a better uh, place for tomorrow for everyone in, in the community. I have a three-year-old, uh, Elena, um, and so she also is my new source of energy and, and to continue to want to um, do the work I do. So she has uh, the opportunities I was given and and has the experiences I do. And, and what's so nice about, you know, most of my family actually is back in, in Guatemala. I have a brother, I have one brother and he's in New Mexico. And I have um, one of my mom's brothers is in um, Vegas. So I go to Vegas quite often. That's where my mom's house is. Um, and we, we see our family there, but the rest of my family is out of the country. And so it's been nice to be able to go to Guatemala. Lena has been three times so far. Um, and just being able to just go back and stay in touch and, and have her learn the culture that, you know, I was raised in and the language. Um, and it's it's a big piece of who I am um, and who, who Elena um is growing up to be. So hopefully that answers your question. Oh, and what does the treasurer's office do? <laughs> uh, I forgot about that piece. Uh, so we are the bank and not just for the county departments, but for every taxing district, except for cities and towns. Uh, we're most famous, I guess, most well-known as this is where you go pay your property taxes, but that's actually a small piece of what the office does. So when I say bank, you think about, you know, just everyday, what you need for your everyday banking needs. So we, all the money gets deposited with us. We are the safekeeper, custodian of all public funds um, that whenever your paychecks or you receive it electronically, actually all that gets um, done through my office. We process all of the payroll. Um, we ensure that the money's there. So bills are being paid. Uh, we have to verify that um, we call checks warrants, but warrants that are being presented are actually legal um, and valid. And so fraud protection on accounts. Uh, we also um, manage credit lines for all the districts. Uh, they can't go out to the bank and get their own loan. They have to actually do that through the treasurer's office. Um, debt service management. Uh, so schools, fire districts, whenever you see a bond, they actually have to go through our office for the um, where their fiscal uh, agent um, authorized body. 
uh, and then of course property tax collection and, and then we manage an investment portfolio. Um, so right now we have about 400 million on deposit with our office. We see over a billion dollars in transactions a year. So we are a very finance heavy department um, on top of then the very um, heavy customer service focus. We have over 84,000 parcels in the county. Um, so if you think about it, even if 10% of those come in person, they come twice a year, that's over 16,000 individuals that we see, you would, we'd see in a year. Um, and that's, I lowballing it, um, so to speak. So we do have a very customer service, heavy side of house. We have a very heavy side of um, finance, uh, treasury management side of house. So that is our department in a very, hopefully quick uh, overview. I'm still yeah, no, thank you. Uh, I know things about your department, but even when you explain it, I'm like, oh, that's something we did do too. I didn't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess one of my questions to you is, um, as a full-time elected official and a mom, how do you really keep a work-life balance? Just because I mean, you and I talk offline and stuff, but um, yeah, what are some things that you do to make yourself sane so you're not pulled in maybe as many directions as you could be? That is a great question. I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, you know, I think family is very important to me. And so, you know, it's it's making sure um, we're spending time with family. And, and I do have to say, Honestly, since having Elena, I, I feel like my work-life balance has been much better than than prior to Elena. Um, and but you know, it, it's taking time to take care of you. So uh, I love to travel and go do things, um, and so that's really important. Is staying home all weekend long is actually very exhausting for me. I do like to go and do something. So we'll do like one one day at home and then one day of activities. And, and it's great because it keeps Alana energized. Um, but it's even small things, going to the movie theater, going out to dinner, um, taking Alana to the park, uh, or in the wintertime, the indoor playground at the mall here, um, going to visit family in Vegas. Uh, and, and so that is really important. But at the end of the day, it's really important just to make sure you are taking care of yourself. And for me, it's making sure taking care of myself means taking care of my family. Um, and there's sometimes, you know, as an, well, as an elected, you get asked to do lots of things after hours and it's being comfortable saying no, which I had to say no to um, an event this weekend. And that was a hard one to say no to because I wanted to participate it, but I put family first and um, that's, you know, my number one priority. And so, you know, needing to spend, um, knowing that if I did it, I couldn't do some family time. Uh, so I said no, and and I, it's hard, right? It, it is hard, I think, for us to say no, because it's a potential of some, you know, maybe it's, I can get, experience doing this or professional development. Um, but those opportunities will always be there. It's, you know, one of those we have to remind ourselves, if I say no to this today, it doesn't mean I won't be asked to do something similar. I won't have the same opportunity later. Um, and, you know, what's more important um, to me? And, and maybe, you know, that's something you have to do, but you can't say yes to everything. And that's the lesson I think I've learned is you have to be okay to say no and, and put yourself in, in those you love first. Nice, yeah, that's a good reminder. Um, let's see, my next question is, um, what have been some other roles that you've played outside of Coconino County that have kind of shaped your, your leadership style or your management style? So I, um, you know, I'm involved in a lot of um, different organizations and groups. Uh, so 
I have sat on nonprofit boards here in um, local to Northern Arizona, um, like North Country Healthcare, but I've also sat on some statewide um, boards. I used to be um, on Arizona 211's board. Uh, I'm currently the president of Arizona Association of Counties. I serve on some national um, boards. Uh, and so every, every opportunity is a learning experience. So I've, going into um, these boards and, and learning from others um, and always having an open mind. I will be the best leader if I know that I can always improve. I'm not perfect. Um, things will always change and I can always be and do better. And so, you know, if I am not trying to learn from others and and try to better myself, I'm not gonna come back and 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 lead um well and lead a team well. And so for me, it's participating in these bigger um organizations has really allowed me to meet others across the country um, and learn from them. I actually had this great opportunity in 2017. That sounds about right. Um, I did a political change to Australia um, and it was amazing. Um, and there were seven of us on it and it, it was geared towards um, those between 26 and 40. And, you know, learning from colleagues across um, the country. And, and it wasn't just politics. So there were two of us who were elected officials, um, you know, one who worked uh, in the private sector, one who worked um, public sector, and then one, two who worked for, well, one who worked in the ju judicial system and one who worked for an elected official. And so it was really great because you got to meet others and learn from them, but then go to another country and, and learn from them as well and bring those resources and those tools back um, has been really important. But you always learn. And so I've always seen those opportunities. Heck, even when I, I've been invited to speak, you know, nationally, it's a great opportunity because I try to attend the whole conference because I'll learn something new and then I'll bring it back. And usually my team is like, oh, Sarah's bringing something back. <laughs> uh, but, but it's okay. Uh, and, and so it's, it's really important. And, and I really do encourage, um, you know, support locally, but don't be scared to step outside your comfort box and, and maybe go outside of Coconino County because there's a lot to learn. Um, and even just connecting with a colleague from a different state um, or even a different county in Arizona, you learn a lot that you can bring back and help develop and um, grow your leadership skills. Nice. Yeah, you, you are busy on a bunch of different different committees that I forget about all the time <laughs> that you are on. But I think that shows that you just like representing us and you know we are kind of unique in in the fact of the county like we're like metro but rural and so it's it's mm -hmm. interesting sometimes how that works out but um another question that I have is um what have been some of the struggles or maybe learning opportunities that you've had throughout your career as being a woman, a Latina woman in the workplace and kind of, has there been any of those like aha moments or I don't know, just moments of like, I did something that no one else could do and it it didn't matter because I, I was there, so. You know, I think throughout, you know, my, every, it's a great question. I'm trying to think how to, you know, start it. Um, it it's been interesting. I, I got to say, uh, being a woman of color, and then an added layer is being a young woman of color. Um, that's something that I I do get um, throughout my career has been, well, you're really young, or oh, well, given your background and your age, you shouldn't be where you're at. Um, and often, overall, it's been a very positive experience, but those come up and you have these moments of like, oh, okay, well, why does that matter? Um, and so, you know, every, 
you can't change others. You can't change people. Um, you can try and you can lose sleep over it, but there's going to be some individuals that you will never change their perception of you, I've learned, um, which is, uh, you know, hard. And, and but again, there's just going to be some people who are going to take one look at me and, and never accept me for the skills I bring um, and accept me for the successes I've done. Um, so you can't. I try not to stress about that because if I do, I'm going to just, you know, it, it's not going to be good for my overall being. Um, but what I can do is just continue to, you know, go forward and, and celebrate the fact that I am a Latina, right? I, I think that's big is I like to celebrate the fact that I am a Latina. I, you know, came from just a very working family. Um, you know, my family, one, we, we don't come from wealth. Um, and those are skill sets that were really ingrained in me. You know, if you work hard, you will have a, you know, people will see and, and um, you'll have a, a happy life. And, and so it's really important. Um, and there's been great successes. You know, it, it brings me joy to be able to say Coconino County is at the forefront in terms of innovation um, in treasury management. You know, we've done white papers with, you know, organizations like PayPal on the work that we're doing. You know, we speak at um, groups like Governing's Financial Leadership Conference. Um, and it's because the work that we're doing is innovative. And part of the reason why I feel we're able to do that is because of the life experiences that, you know, myself and I've, I've gone through. Um, and so, you know, being a Latina, I think has made me um, more successful in my career. And I'm very comfortable with that. Um, and, but it, that was definitely something to learn. Cause I have to say, I think one of the harder things for me is I did a leadership program and at the time they were pairing you with um, like a mentor and the mentor I was paired with, I met with her one time, he was supposed to meet with us with three. And she said to me, I don't know what to do with you. She's like, based off of your background, how you were raised, she's like, you should be working the cashier job at like CVS. You shouldn't be county treasurer. So she's like, I can't help you. I don't think you should be where you're at. Wow. That was really hard because I had, you know, it was my first year's county treasurer and, you know, in my 20s and it, it was, it was difficult and it was supposed to be this statewide leadership program that's supposed to empower you and you didn't. And so I, I spoke up and, you know, let the program administrators know, hey, this happened. Well, that coach had been paired with, um, you know, another Latina who had the same exact experience as I did. So actually they no longer do coaching anymore. Um, and that was a big piece of it. Um, but again, I go back into, I can't change the perception of some people. They're just going to have this preconceived perceptions. I think you should only be doing this. And I think, well, I just, nope, can't, I can't fix that problem in them. But what I can do is I can, you know, not let it bring me down. And I think that's really key for all of us of, you know, there's going to be times when we are going to be shut down. There's going to be times where people are going to make us feel like we shouldn't be seeking these opportunities or we're not going to be successful um, for various reasons. And we can't let that impact what we're doing because all of us have a potentially successful, you know, doesn't matter where we came from. Um, you know, I, again, my experiences have made me the person to, and I wouldn't change any of it for anything. Um, and so if someone else thinks that, you know, because of my experiences, I should just be being a cashier. Well, that's on them. Um, you know, that's not a reflection of the reality and what I bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of it is really making sure you believe in yourself. And I, I do have to say as a Latina female, I walk into a lot of rooms where one, I'm the only person who looks like me <laughs> on both sides. I'm the only person who's under a certain age. I'm the only person, well, honestly, usually the only person of color. And I'm, 
I, I have gone to conferences where I've been a speaker at in the finance world, and it's like a room of like 250 individuals, and there's only like 10 females. Um, and I'm definitely the only woman of color and the only one under probably, you know, the only one in under 40. And, and so it's, but that's, you have to be okay to do that because my goal is if I'm doing it, then by the time, maybe, you know, five, 10, 15 years from now, that's, that has shifted. Um, and we are embracing and we're celebrating diversity more, um, in, in these fields, um, which when you do that, there's more innovation um, and it's not a bad thing. And I don't know if that quite answered your question. I feel like I went down a, a rabbit hole, but. Oh, and no, it's all good. I I think you, you hit on some good topics about like diversity and inclusion and, you know, the importance of, if you're the only person in the room, that's not a bad thing. It's setting that precedent for other people to be in the room with you at some point. You know, it's not, exactly. it's not just, oh, I'm the first one and I have to be the trendsetter here. Like, no, it's just, you're the first one that was able to be in there. And so being proud about that is is what keeps you motivated versus the negative stuff that does happen. You know, mm -hmm. like, I can't believe somebody was like, I can't mentor you. Like, what? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, it was, it was, uh, and that had come after having, having done a separate, um, leadership program that was more focused on nonprofit and more public serving. Like if you wanted to be on for those sitting on like not statewide boards and working in like large nonprofits and having such a positive experience um, with a mentor there who I still talk to, um, to then go and be like, oh, this was a new next obvious progression um, to just have, and actually that mentor who I had, that coach who I had there was a coach in this other program, but of course they didn't put me with her because I had already had her. And to just see, like, just have, go from this positive to such a negative, it was hard, but, you know, it was one where I had to remind myself, I can't, I can't let that bring me down. Mm -hmm. Um and, and it's hard, you know, it's hard not to take certain things personally and, and let that bring you down. But, you know, you, you go through them, the motions, you have to go through the feelings, but you can't stay in there and you can't dwell on it. Um, and so, you know, you move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good reminder. Um, let's see. Um, I guess what what inspires you in your in your really because you're you're not an official but you're also like a director in a way. <laughs> I mean, what inspires you and and how do you um, keep keep that going for like you know because you have a whole department of employees and so I guess what what are some of your strategies for uh, keeping everyone motivated, but at the same time, like, I don't know, it's been rough with like COVID and different mm -hmm. things. And so I guess I just am curious, like, how have you and your department really like kind of gone through those difficulties and come out the other side? It's a great question. Um, and again, I have to recognize that we're always, everything isn't, you know, sunshine and rainbows, right? There's going to be difficult times in our office. There are, our peak times are extremely stressful. You know, we're, we have to do the, the financial thing every day. When those tax notices hit the door and we've got the due dates coming up, we're talking about hundreds of people coming through the doors and hundreds of phone calls, up to 400 phone calls a day. And we still have to do all the other things that we're doing. It's stressful. It's very taxing. I am aware of that. And I, I don't like to sugarcoat it for staff because I want them to understand, hey, if you're feeling overwhelmed, 
that's okay. I'm not going to tell you, oh no, it's not that bad. You're not. And, and then you, you, you fall into it being an overwhelming situation. And you're like, well, Sarah said it wasn't going to be this bad. So there might be something wrong with it. I never want that. Um, and so it's really important for me with the team to be very open, very honest with them and very transparent. Um, that's, I think, really important to do and um, to be very supportive of them. So a big thing for me is, um, and I know the county has policies in terms of, um, you know, families come to the workplace. I, um, I am extremely flexible. And so we have staff who are grandparents, we have staff who are parents, we have staff who are aunts, uncles, et cetera. Um, and, you know, sometimes they, kids don't have childcare or daycare or school. And I am extremely supportive of, you know, they can come to the office. We actually have uh, toys and books of all ages. Um, so, you know, they can come and, and be at the office and it's, it's a, safe place for them and and our staff can still work if they need to take the time off we we let them take the time off um you know and and family again is very important to me um and i know it's very important to to the team and so you know making sure that they feel very supportive is key to me making sure if they are tired they can take that day off um you know when i say is everything we do I mean, there are certain situations, but it's a reminder, everything we do, we have a backup plan for, and taking care of yourself and your safety and your family is number one. So never feel like you can't take the time to take care of you because of something in the office. It will, we can handle it. We can, we can deal with it. It is not a crisis mode 24 seven. Um, and so part of that too has been being very um, proactive with staff, um, having them think proactively versus reactively. So let's plan ahead. Okay, so we know we're gonna get busy during this time. So what can we do to hopefully make it where customers are getting their answers on um, the internet easier versus calling. At fiscal year end for us is very busy because we send out delinquent notices by statute. It's fiscal year end. Everyone's trying to receive in money at the same time. So it's like, okay, what can we do to help, you know, make this where we're not then reactively paying, playing catch up, which makes everything worse. Um, and so, you know, it's working with the team. Um, and I, you know, little things like, staff like to feel appreciated. They like to, to be thanked. They like to be recognized. Um, so trying to thank them, trying to, you know, um, really appreciate and value them. Um, you know, we nominated, um, one of our staff, uh, did this huge IT user um, project for us, which finally brought us in compliance with our IT audit. Um, and it was huge. I mean, it, it was like, a, it's a big deal. And, and he single-handedly carried this and did an amazing job. And so, you know, I nominated him for an award with the software vendor. Unfortunately, we didn't get it, but I still made sure I'm gonna nominate you. And I went through with a nomination. I still think he should have gotten it and we should have gotten it, but that's a whole other separate thing. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, doing those things. And, and, and some of the other things is putting trust in your staff. I have seen that goes a very long way. Um, if you trust your staff, if you trust your team, they value that. They, they see that you care for them. Um, and so, you know, there's different ways to show that you trust them. I mean, you can tell them, you can give them projects or responsibility, which, you know, I mean, that all of us are already taxed, um, you know, and, and are very tired, um, but you, you recognize them and, and you show that you do have that trust there. And, you know, for me, for example, um, it's really important that everyone on our team attends training and training doesn't have to be virtual and training doesn't have to be in Flagstaff because the reality of the work we, we do, it's not going to be both. And so, you know, it's, I, I've, I've oftentimes have had employees say, well, I've never had it where, you know, the front counter is traveling out of state for a conference. And it's like, well, why not? 
it's going to benefit them. And why am I going to go to this conference? The reality is I'm not going to sit down and show them everything I learned. They can go and they're the ones who are going to be implementing every day, not me. So why do I need to go? Also, I don't like to go to so many conferences. And so it's, again, trusting the staff to travel, to to do these things, to gain these experiences and to bring it back and implement them. And, and that I think really helps build a stronger team. Mm -hmm. And we're always gonna have you know issues, especially for us because we are spread out right now. We're not all working together under one roof. So it is, you know, it does get difficult and I, I recognize that. And so it's making sure that there's opportunities for everyone to feel inclusive in the team. And again, it's, we are small, I know, than some of the other departments. Um, and so it is easier for me to be able to know that with everyone and where they are. But um, I still think it's transferable to a bigger department and a bigger organization of just making sure that you're instilling trust, you're creating a, for me, I personally believe a family oriented um, workplace, a very safe workplace, and you're celebrating the diversity of your team. Um, because, you know, that I think is also a very big thing is celebrating diversity and making it feel like a safe space for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Those are good things for us to kind of think about and um I don't know I'm biased about your team because uh <laughs> <laughs> just because I benefit from someone who is on your team so um yeah it's it's a cool place to work um and you've even picked up people like Mary Tinklenberg I heard huh yeah so Mary is doing some temp work for us so um she's helping <sighs> Again, we thinking about how do we reduce calls and we have a big return mail project because we get thousands of pieces of return mail. Like if you ever come to our office, it, it's a lot. Um, and so, you know, trying to just research and, hey, is this person where they're at? Where's the new address? Because then what happens is we get one, we're spending the money on doing all that return mail, but two, they're also calling us very angry. Well, I didn't get my, my tax notice and we didn't have an a, a updated address for them. They moved and didn't notify the county assessor and, and that happens. And so that helps us. Um, but again, it's one of those tasks where we can use a temp for. And so Mary actually is doing, um, helping doing that research for us, which we really needed. So, yeah. Yeah. Great. Temps, they work great. <laughs> yes, we have actually a couple retired county employees who are doing some temp work for us. Um, we have a retired attorney who um, helps us with back tax stuff, for example. So mm -hmm. um, we do like whenever they retire and they reach out, usually uh, Sue and I are like, all right, we can totally use help. <laughs> we have lots of projects. So what's a good skill set for them? Yeah. And what can they help us with? Yeah. That's cool. Um, um, what or who have been some influential people for you um, that you've looked up to within your career for your own inspiration and kind of motivation? Because, I mean, you'd kind of do that on your own, but at the same time, I mean, it's hard. And so having those people in your life, who would those be for you? So there's been a number through the years. Um, and, and at various, you know, I feel sometimes you think, oh, well, it has to be this like super, um, like an executive and they're at all levels, to be honest, you know, I mean, arena, like what you do inspires me. Um, and so there's a number on this call, like I'm going to call out Mary, <laughs> but Mary, you know, I just her demeanor and, and just, I get to work with her and, and it's just so I inspire when I'm doing like some of my, like working with the attorneys and stuff to be calm and organized like Mary. <laughs> um, and so, you know, it, it's, it's, there have been a number of individuals and, you know, 
and I draw inspiration and in, in from so many because there's, I, I'm like, when I grew up, I want to be like Patty. When I grew up, I want to be like Denise, right? Like, it's just like, there's all these people I want to grow up and, and be like. And so, and, and there's so many different traits and, and characteristics that I want to inspire to have in me. And so, and I get it even from the teen, um, you know, those know who Terry, Terry is so calm when a customer is like yelling at her. <laughs> um, and so I'm like, I, I draw inspiration on that. It's like, it's a reminder. Okay. So in these really difficult situations, when I am just someone is coming at you. Um, let me, let me remind myself of how others have been and, you know, do that. And I mean, my biggest inspiration has always been my mom. Uh, you know, she raised two kids on her own, um, not from this country, not speaking the language, um, not having, you know, gone and have a four-year degree and, and, my looking at my brother and I, what we're doing. And, and so that's been an inspiration. Um, you know, family members inspire me and there's, you know, in this community, I, you look at, um, some of the elected officials we have, I mean, Patty, um, who's our recorder talk about breaking down barriers. Um, you know, she's was the first woman in so many things and, and just, you know, just have some of the things that, deal with in terms of legislative issues just seeing what she had gone through drives inspiration I need to keep the fight going um as tiring as it can be and so it's so hard to pinpoint one individual um but you know it's finding those key people is so important and I have to say since being among two it's finding inspiration in other working moms. Um, that's really been a big thing, you know, I, talking to, to other working moms. I'm like, how do you do it? <laughs> um, you know, and then juggling and, and Elena's at an age right now where, you know, we rely on daycare and if there's, there's no daycare, she's running around. So if this was actually a week from now, um, she would be running around because she she doesn't have daycare. Um, she goes to a Jewish preschool, so uh, she won't have daycare for Passover, which is April fifth through fourteenth. Um, and you know, there's a treasurer um, from Pima County who's been in office for over twenty years, and she actually became a treasurer as um, she had a little one. Uh, she started treasure when her little one was about four or five. And so, you know, drawing inspiration of like, how'd you, how'd you do it? Um, and how, you know, being a working treasure mom and, and seeing that from other elected officials across the country too, has been extremely, um, just great to, to have that, um, and, and have that around you. So, you know, I, I'm not one of those who has like a list because my list is so big because I draw inspiration from so many. Um, and I think that's been really helpful to, um, for me, just personal growth has just been to drive so much inspiration from those around me. Um, I'm, I'm an extrovert. So being around people and spending time with people really brings me energy. So spending time with strong women and spending time um, with just caring individuals really feeds my energy and inspires me to be a better person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can relate to that. I mean, you've been someone that's been inspiring for me this whole time at the county. I mean, when we first met, I was like, you're the treasurer? And you were like, yeah. And I was like, oh, I thought you were an intern like me. <laughs> And then you saved me with flats at the conference because I was dying in the heels. <laughs> yes. But yeah, um, great. Well, I appreciate that because you're right. It is about getting inspired by the other women that we work with in the workplace. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not a mom yet, but man, sure seeing all these working moms gives me mm -hmm. hope for the day that when I do have a kid that I can do it because right now I'm like, uh, I don't know but it works out and I see all these superhero moms and mm -hmm. career women that have worked up the ladder or just 
have been totally just in their zone and they just they have a passion for what they do like like you said like mary like mary i don't know how she does what she does but she does it (laughs) does it so well (laughs) yeah she's gotten so many compliments this week so kudos to mary but um i guess one of my final questions is just about um I don't know, any advice that you would give to people that are maybe in the the middle rung of the county or maybe one day want to move into being a director or something like that, like any advice for them on how to kind of prepare for those things and like see those opportunities that maybe aren't always visible, but have been, um, something that maybe you kind of used in your way of getting to where you are in a way, if that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. So I think like a big thing is, you know, don't be scared to put yourself out there. Um, And and the reason why you say that is like, so what's the worst that's going to happen if, oh, you're thinking to myself, well, maybe I should apply for this. What's the worst that's going to happen? You're not going to get it. Okay. Um, are you in a worse spot by having put that out there? Usually not. Um, and so, and the best thing that can happen is if you get it, well, if you decide not to apply, you're not going to have it right. You're not going to get it. So, you know, it's one of those where like, don't be scared to put yourself out there because even if you don't get it, number one, people know you're looking. Um, number two, people know, hey, I, that you are um, confident and have, know that you have the skill set to be able to, you know, get that promotion, be a director one day, um, try a different skill set. Like if you're in like one area and you want to go to a different area, then you put yourself out there and they, oh, okay, well, maybe I didn't know, maybe you were interested in, in finance for business manager. So let's, you know, get you some training for that. And how can we help? And so I think it's really important is putting yourself out there because you never know too maybe someone didn't notice within your organization or the department, but somebody else in another department or another organization noticed. Um, and that's an opportunity. Uh, and so, you know, it's, that's a big thing I always tell people of don't put yourself, don't be scared to put yourself out there. Um, and I, I feel to, um, you know, as, as a woman, as people, as a person of color, um, oftentimes we are our own um, worst enemy and our own biggest, um, give ourselves the most criticism because we say, well, we don't have enough experience or they're going to want someone with more experience or they're going to want someone who's older or they're going to want this or or that. Um, And so we talk ourselves out of going for those opportunities and putting ourselves out there. We talk ourselves out of putting ourselves out there to even go to like a big training and we need to stop doing that. Um, and we need to be much more, um, we need to be our own biggest cheerleaders more. And I, I often remind myself that too is, you know, we need to be our biggest cheerleaders. Um, and, and I have to say, you know, yeah, just believing in yourself, putting yourself out there and, trying to, you know, gain as much experience. Sometimes if you want to be, again, and this is just, I'm going to do like more of a broad, but um, I was talking, I did a presentation to a uh, a big bank. Uh, they have a, a woman's um, mentorship program. And so I, I did a presentation to them about leadership and, and told them, you know, if there's an opportunity that presents itself to you and you're thinking, hmm, this isn't quite what I thought I wanted to do, but I'm interested, or it might give me the skill sets to go to where I want to go, put yourself out there, go for it. Um, I did not dream to be the county treasurer. That's not something I inspired to do, but I wanted to be in a position of making big changes in my community. So when this opportunity came up, it was talking to family and, and I decided to go for it. Cause I was like, well, what do I have to lose? I have nothing to lose and everything to gain by putting myself out there. Um, and, and here I am, you know, almost nine years later, this is as long as I've ever been in a workplace and 
I, I love what I do and I can't imagine having not be doing this right now. So you would, you often will be surprised. Um, again, as an opportunity might, might not be what you thought, be open-minded to it because you never know. Um, and if you have that, if you see something you're like, and you stop and you think about it, think about it a little harder is my, my two cents on that too. Because if you stopped on it for a second to look at it, you did that for a reason. So trust that initial gut feeling. Mm -hmm. Gut feeling. That's a good one. Cool. Well, um, that's all the questions I really have for you. Um, is there anyone on the meeting that has any questions for Sarah or wants to give some comments? Um, I just want to thank you for being here and spending time with us just because, like you said, your busy schedule, but uh, let's see. Denise says, thank you for all your words and inspiration. She's got to go, but she's having a good time listening to you. Thanks, Denise. Um, let's see. What's her name? So Sarah, I just wanted to thank you for a wonderful presentation. You did a great job. And your words were very inspiring to me, be, being someone who's Hispanic as well. And just working in, di in a diverse work group like the county, which I enjoy. And um, yeah, you had some very, your office is wonderful to work with. And the staff that you have all seem very happy. Um, so I like that and I like working with them and I like working with you as well. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Mary. <laughs> I get to see Mary later too. <laughs> That's true. She's going to be tired of me by the end of the day. No, no, I was going to say, Mary, you might not be saying nice things about me later. <laughs> <laughs> More work. Well, those are challenges and we take those on and we try to do the best we can. And you always have some very interesting things that come up that, you know, some of us have never even heard of before. Like I've been in the legal field for over 20 years. And when I worked in Las Vegas, I did a lot of different types of law, just all different types. And so some things that you bring up, I've never even heard of before. <laughs> and, but it's always a challenge and it's always good. And we always try to figure out uh, what we can do and do our, try to do our best. And it's I always a learning that. experience on both sides, right? It, it, it really <laughs> is. And I appreciate that. Thanks. I just wanted to add that that collaboration between departments, between people, making connections with people beyond your own department. I think it really speaks to how we do work here. I mean, you talked about so many other people in the organization that you collaborate with and and who inspire you in different ways. And, and I really think that that's what helps us do such great work here is that we, we care about one another. We do that work together. And so it's really, as always, great to hear from you, Sarah. I love it when you present, um, and particularly during Hispanic Heritage Month, because I love to hear your stories of Guatemala and um, especially when you talk about the food and the kite festival and all of those things, but two, to, uh, to have you present during Women's History Month is so important. And, and to hear from uh, working moms in different phases of age groups, right? Um, mm -hmm. To especially with, with little ones, with young kiddos, um, and it does inspire others. And uh, thanks for your leadership. Thanks, Erica. Appreciate it. Thank you. I just want to say, um, in case, because I know this is being recorded and if there are any county moms watching, um, you know, it's, I feel sometimes too, as a mom, you often just end up just saying no to things because you are a mom. And I have to say, don't be scared to not say no or to ask. So uh, an example is um, we have our big county treasurer's conference next week, or two weeks, sorry, uh, the week of the 11th. And um, I was just not going to go because Elena has some daycare. That's actually what I did last year. Uh, and so I let, you know, the treasurer know, I just, I can't go. Elena has some daycare. And they were like, well, just bring her. I was like, well, <laughs> I'm like, you guys won't mind, but I'm like, you, there's going to be some like, you know, like CEO of Alliance Bank will be there and like, yeah, but they don't care either. 
And if they do, who cares? And it's like, it's a great point. It's right, right? I have to remember, you know, to sometimes what I say and what I tell the team. And so, yeah, so she's coming with me to the treasurer's conference. And, um, you know, speaking of Alliance Bank and their execs that are going to be there, they've actually asked that Elena's on their curling team. And I was like, well, you're the first one. So you get first first pick there. So, you know, it, it's, and it's right. Like Elena's come with me to fire board meetings. I think when she was a baby, every fire chief has held her. She's been in meetings with big bank execs. She's gone to the Capitol with me. And, and that's just the reality of being a working mom. Um, you know, I don't, my Nathan, who's my husband and I, we don't have any family in Arizona. It's just the two of us. And, and so, you know, she, she has to come with me places. And I think too, you know, being, making it more normal, being comfortable doing that and even asking, I think that's a big thing too. And, and especially the county, um, you know, I feel like it's a much more acceptant workplace um, in terms of having family around and understanding that. And so I, that's my like parting words is this, I know it's a little more geared to moms, but I think that's really important is just a reminder of, there's going to be situations come up and don't be scared to say, Hey, I've, I have to have my little one that day. Right. My, my teenager doesn't have care. Can they come in? Because you'd be surprised of how many people be like, just, just do it. We want you here. And if that means you, we have to, it's you and a plus one, it's you and a plus one. Um, and you'd be surprised how much, uh, uh, kids and, 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 and for children too, I have to throw the fur children out there. Um, bring joy to those around you. Um, and I know like when I used to bring Elena in, the team loved it. Um, and actually like others from other departments would come and see her and it would just bring joy to, for us, it was joy to the building at the time. So yeah, you'd be surprised. So don't be shy. Shy, don't be scared to ask. Thanks. Thank you again, Sarah. And Everybody have a good rest of <clears throat> Thursday. But uh, tomorrow we're going to be having the Lunch and Learn on Maya Angelou. So don't miss that. That's at noon tomorrow. And the recordings, if you need to know where the recordings are, just give me a message and I can send that to you. Uh, they're on the internet at the moment. But hopefully we'll be getting on the YouTube soon. So um, thanks again, Sarah and everybody for attending. And have a great rest of the day. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Thanks, Bye. Sarah. Bye.